Welcome to part two of the Guitar Pick Tray series. Today we're going to go over how to create our soft gels. We're then going to take the vise with our soft gels into our assembly from the previous tutorial, where we will then go to the manufacturing tab and just create our setup for OP2. In the following tutorials, we will go ahead and go through the individual tool paths in Fusion 360, and then we'll get to see the exciting part, which is my Tormach performing those operations. I already have the model of our vise with our soft jaws open. We'll just take a second to examine it. You'll notice it's fairly simple. I have the model of our vise. You can grab those from the vise manufacturer's website. In my case, I'm using a Kurt DX4, so I got the model of the vise from the Kurt website. I then created two rectangular extrusions that match the parameters of my soft jaws. And then I simply jointed those extrusions to the jaws of the vise. So what we want to do now is we want to make the opening of our vise jaws parametric such that we can size our jaws to any part we may need in the future. So how do we do that? First, we go to Modify, Change Parameters, and then we go to Add User Parameter in the upper left corner. And we need to give our parameter a name. I'm going to choose the name Jaw Gap, and I'm going to enter a value of four inches. So now we've created the user parameter. I'm gonna press OK. The next thing we need to do is create a joint between our soft jaws. So I'm going to press J for joint. I'm going to choose the center of both soft jaws, so orbit, so I can grab the other soft jaw. Okay, now we're going to enter the name of our parameter in the axis in which the jaws are opening. In this case, that's Z. So Fusion was smart enough to go ahead and pull up our parameter name for us, which is nice. So I'm just going to click on it click OK and now you notice our vice jaws indeed moved away from each other four inches so this is powerful if I go back to modify and I go to change parameters and let's just go ahead and make this two inches you'll notice our vice jaws indeed open and close accordingly and again this allows us to move our soft jaws so we can accommodate any part we may need in the future I'm going to go ahead and move this back to four inches. Okay. And now I'm going to go back to home view. We're going to create a joint origin so that we can bring our pick tray in and joint it to our soft jaws. So we will go to a symbol. We will click joint origin and then we will go over to between two faces. Now we'll select both of our front soft jaw faces. and then we will click on the top edge of one of our jaws. That will create a joint origin, but you'll notice it's vertical. You'd actually like it to sit horizontally. So all that we need to do is click reorient, and then we will click on the top of one of our soft jaws. And now our joint origin is nice and parallel. So we'll click OK. We'll go back to home view. We'll drag in the model of our pick tray. We will rotate it 180 degrees. And then we're gonna drag it up and out of the way. So now we'll go back to our home view and we will take advantage of that joint origin. So we will press J for joint, click on the center of our model, and then we'll click on our joint origin. Now, right off the bat, you'll notice we have two issues. Number one, we are too far below the surface of our soft jaw. So my preference is usually 200 thousandths to a quarter of an inch. I think that provides enough soft jaw to grasp my part when I apply pressure with the vise and hold it securely enough where I'm not afraid my machining operations will actually pull the part out of the soft jaws. The other issue I'm seeing is that the upper horn here is not making contact with the soft jaws. So let's go ahead and solve these issues. So the first thing I'm going to do is click over here in Z 
And what I find it easy to do is we'll go ahead and enter the length of our walls, which we know from the previous tutorial was 0.7 of an inch or 700 thousandths. I will then let Fusion do the math. So I will say minus 200 thou. So you'll notice when we brought it up, we're now flush with that surface. And then we do the minus 200 thou. We are now 200 thou below the surface of our soft gel, which is where we want to be. The next thing we want to do is move our model over such that we engage the soft jaw with that upper horn. You'll notice that when I move in the direction toward the soft jaw that we're actually going minus. So what I'm going to do is go minus 200 thousandths. So that looks good there to me. We'll just verify by pressing OK and then we'll go to our top view. And we'll notice indeed we have the lower horn here engaged with our soft jaw and we also have part of the upper horn engaged with the soft jaw. So I think that that will work perfectly. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to our home view. Now we'll cut out our soft jaws to match our part geometry. So to do that, the easiest way that I find, and again, you can do this many ways, I like to go to modify and then go to combined. I will select my target body, which is the soft jaw. And then the tool body in this case is going to be our pick tray. And what we want to do is go to cut. And that should do what we want. So we'll click OK. And now if we just go ahead and make our pig tray invisible, you'll notice it did indeed cut out where our model was. So we'll go ahead and do the same thing for the back side, and then I'll show you how to clean up those extra extrusions. So again, we'll just go to combine. You can click here, or you can use the drop down menu. Again, click on the target body. The tool body is our model, and then we want to make sure that we are in cut mode, which we are. We'll click OK, and then we'll go ahead and hide our model, and you'll notice we, do in, we did indeed get the cutout. So it's very simple to clean up where we would like our soft jaws to have a flat surface. So we simply click, press E for extrude, and we want to go minus 200 thousandths. All right, so that's nice. We'll then go ahead and do the same thing on the other side of the vise. I'm just control clicking the surface. And now I will press E again for extrude and I will say minus 0.2 or 200 thousandths. And there we go. We have complete soft gels. So we'll go back to the home view and we can just go ahead and enable our pick tray again. And we'll just orbit, make sure everything looks nice. Yep, I don't see any issues with that. So now we have our soft jaws completed. We'll go back to home view. We'll now make our pick tray model invisible. And we will control S for save. And we can go ahead and close our soft jaw model now. And what we will do is open up our assembly from the previous tutorial, which I have here. Make sure you go from the manufacturing tab to the des design tab. And what I'm going to do now is go ahead and hide uh, the vice model with the fixed jaws and the parametric stock. And I'm going to drag in our soft jaw vice model. Okay, and you'll notice we need to zoom out and drag the vice up and out of the way. We need to rotate it 90 degrees, and then we'll need to perform another rotation of 180 degrees to get the vise in the correct orientation. Now all I'm going to do is zoom in, press J for joint, and I'm going to create a joint right here on the edge of our model. So let me zoom in here so I can get to where I want. 
There we go, right there on that edge. And then I will go ahead and position the vise so that I can zoom in here. And we will go ahead and join it to our model. There we go. So I'll press enter. And what we'll do is just go ahead and look around and make sure there are no issues. We are indeed on the bottom of the soft jaws. There are no gaps. Our model is in place. So we'll go ahead and go back to our home view. And so this is what I like to call the two vice method. So if I go ahead and I make the other vice visible, you'll notice that in our assembly, we have our vice, our parametric stock, and our model for op1. And we also have our soft jaw model of our vice jointed for op2. So now what we're going to do is control S, and then we're going to move to the manufacturing tab. Okay, now that we are in the manufacturing tab, we want to create our setup for op2. So what we want to do is right click on setups and new setup. The next thing we want to do is make the vice and our parametric stock from op1 invisible. So what we'll do is expand models, expand assembly, and we will go ahead and make them invisible. All right, the next thing we want to do is orient our vise in the correct position like it would be sitting on our machine. So I will do that now with the orbit tool. Bear with me. There we go. We'll zoom in. This should be good enough. The next thing I'm going to do is go back here to our setup and I'm going to choose our model. That's easy. That is the pick tray. Then I am going to set up the fixture. So we'll click fixture. We'll go here and expand our soft jaw vise and we will choose all of the components except for the pick tray. All right, now we have our fixture set up. The next thing we want to do is choose our probe point. So I'm going to go to origin. So we, again, we want to set our work origin and I use the Tormach probe. In this case, we are going to go to selected point and I always probe off of the soft jaws for my second operation if I don't have part geometry that I can probe from. So for example, if this part had a nice through hole that was reamed and I could you know, probe my origin from that hole, I would go that route. This is a nice flat surface and it will have a, as you'll see later, it will have a hat of material. So there's really no way that I can probe the part itself to create a work origin. So what we're going to do is just probe the soft jaws. So again, we're always going to probe or set our work origin on the fixed jaw side. And I, I like to choose the backhand corner. So that's what we're going to choose. Sorry, the back corner. You could have chosen the inside corner. I just prefer the back corner as long as it's on the fixed jaw side. Now you'll notice our axes are incorrect. So to solve this first, we will go ahead and click the Z arrow, which will make it go in the opposite direction. So now our Z axis is pointed properly, but our X and Y are incorrect. To solve that, I'm gonna click over here on X axis, and then I am going to select this edge. Now our axes are pointed in the proper location and our setup for op2 is done. The only other thing we should make sure is that when we go to stock, we have from previous setup, which we do, and we will enable rest machining. We'll click OK. And there we go. You notice it brings the stock from the previous setup into this operation. We haven't performed any tool pass or removed any material from setup one or op one yet. So that's why we have this ugly green piece of stock sitting here. But in the next set of tutorials, we will be removing material and you will see the stock on our second operation adjust accordingly. The other cool thing and why I prefer using the two vice method is because now we can seamlessly, seamlessly toggle between op one 
and OP2 here in the Manufacture tab. And if you're unable to do this, all you need to do is go down here to Synchronize Active Setup and make sure everything is checked. And then it should be very easy to toggle between your setups. All right, that is it for part two. In the following tutorials, we'll get into the good stuff. We'll go through the tool pass and again, see material being removed on the tour mock. Thank you for tuning in and I will see you shortly.